A thoughtfully personalized digital media entertainment center will provide you and your family a central spot to satisfy all of your leisurely couch potato desires. There are a bazillion different ways and versions of doing this, but we're gonna distill this down and show you the quickest, easiest, best way of setting up your own personal media center experience. After you follow along and get set up in this first basic video, we'll be able to move on to some more advanced stuff like setting up your own personal MP3s, videos, and games. Instead of waiting for the cable company to bring us entertainment, let's just entertain ourselves. Stick with us and we'll help you cut that cord. Uh, we mean the coax cord, not the ethernet cord. Don't uh, get ahead of yourself here. What you'll need for this is a Raspberry Pi model four and you'll want the two gigabyte model at least, four gigabyte model even better yet. A blank micro SD card with at least 32 gigabytes of memory and a computer with one of those SD card slots. A wired USB keyboard is great for setup, but not as comfortable on the couch, so you might want a wireless USB keyboard for that reason. Similar situation on game controllers, if you're planning on building out the most awesome entertainment system ever, you're gonna want to add some retro games to it, and with that you might as well go with the wireless game controllers to make it nice and comfy from the couch. To load the software onto the micro SD card, we're going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. You can download it from the site if you haven't already. Open up that Raspberry Pi Imager software from Windows or Mac or whatever you're using. Once it's open, all you gotta do is click that Choose Operating System button. We're gonna scroll down to where it says Media Player OS. And we want this first option here, Libre Elect. Okay, what the heck? When I started putting this video together, there was an image file just sitting in here waiting nice and pretty for us. Um, not a problem. We're going to make a small detour. I'm going to show you how to get around this. With any luck, by the time you watch this video, hopefully that image file is sitting back in there just waiting for you to click. Of course, you could always follow the same process to load any custom operating system image you wanted onto your micro SD card for your Raspberry Pi, the same way you would with the Bellina Etcher type of product. From your browser, navigate to libreelect.tv, click on Downloads. They have their own imaging software shown on here, but don't get distracted. We're going to continue down here to the Raspberry logo. And from here, you can download the latest and greatest version of this image file right to your machine. Okay, grab this image file we saved to our machine. Put that into that custom image file spot on the imager for Raspberry Pi. Pop in that blank micro SD card and give it a go. Okay, once it's done, we can pull it out of the computer, take it out of the adapter, and then slide the micro SD card into the slot at the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. Connect the ethernet cord to an open spot on your network. I mean, you can do this stuff over Wi-Fi too, but just to make it easy and quick and painless, let's plug in this ethernet cord before powering up, I wanted to point out there's two HDMI ports on the Raspberry Pi product, and if you're brand new to this, you might be like, hey, do I just play eeny, meeny, miny, mo? You could do that, but to save you some trouble, the one on the left is gonna be your default HDMI output main. Now all you gotta do is plug in the USB keyboard and connect your Pi to power. When you first boot up, you'll likely be met with a welcome screen and some configurations to get your Pi onto your network. And unless you know otherwise, the default settings should be okay. And we're in. This is the default Cody skin you see here. You can navigate around with your keyboard. As Cody's evolved over the years from the Xbox Media Center to what it is today, this skin and navigation style has stayed pretty consistent. I mention that specifically because if you're new to this, you probably want to follow along while the skin stays in this default setting. 
before we start making major changes and personalizing it. And then uh, yours won't look like anyone else's. So arrow key up to that gear in the top, hit enter. Use your arrow keys to drive over to that system settings gear, hit enter. You may wanna make some changes in here, that's cool, but we're gonna aim for this add-ons updates and notifications and such that's going to be your personal preference and there's pros and cons to that but uh, the important one on here is this unknown sources toggle this will warn you because what you're going to do is be giving it access to stuff that has not been tried and true and tested by the cody team i mean if you want the latest and greatest cool stuff you're gonna have to allow it by the way if you navigate down to this gear in the bottom left you can choose this and change the different filter options for these depending on your comfort level but even if ya basic, you still have the option to toggle on this unknown sources. To navigate backwards, you just hit the backspace on your keyboard if you haven't figured that out yet. From this system screen, let's navigate to the interface option. And if you drop down this regional option with the filters enabled, you should be able to change your exact time zone to match your location. I know for us in Arizona, 50% of the year, this clock won't be correct if you don't make these specific changes because we don't use daylight savings time. Also, depending on how your Pi is getting to the internet through some VPN or secret magic door gateway thing, I don't know, but uh, what I found is if your clock is not correct, nine times out of 10, you're gonna wanna aim here. And for the fun we've been waiting for, let's slip into something a little more personal with a new skin. This is where your default skin will be shown. You can always return back to this if you're trying to follow along someone else's tutorial and you're like, hey, mine doesn't look anything like that. Uh, you can always return back. There are a bunch of options out there to get you started, but the best I found yet after all the years of trial and error is this Aeon Nox Silvo. Once it loads up, it'll ask if you want to change your background. And even if you're gonna add something a little more personal, I'm gonna show you a cool one here. If you go down to set single image background, and we'll choose the default live cases image. Now you'll see the look and the navigation's a little bit different, but the functionality is all the same. Let's use the keyboard to move over, scroll the system. Instead of hitting enter, we're gonna hit down on the arrow key to drop down the skin settings option and hit enter to select that. And from here, you'll be able to make a lot of great customization changes, personalizations, and changing the menu options. Beside hiding menu options that don't really pertain to you, you can also reorder them, rename them, and a bunch of other stuff to make it really personal for you. You can hit backspace to get out of here. And from this main menu, I have a couple personal preference items I like to change. Check it out. Like changing this to three items instead of five. And my favorite but subtle change is here, this animated backgrounds toggle, if you turn that on. And check it out, it kind of gives the background some depth. I love this option. If you ever wanted to switch back to that first basic skin or make other major changes to the settings like you would have in that gear icon on that boring skin, you would navigate to settings and hit enter. We'll go up to interface. From here, you can select that default skin and return back to that boring default media center life, which is kind of a good spot for us to wrap up this first basic setup of your own personal digital media center using Kodi on a Libre Elect operating system on a Raspberry Pi 4. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And on future videos, I'll show you how to set up your retro games, video add-ons, and streaming music.